Hello and welcome to the 31st video, sorry, 21st video in this series making Simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos DX version 3. It's been quite a while since I've done a video, you've probably realised you've been following the series. Apologies for that, but basically what's happened is about two months ago, two and a half months ago, my job changed um, for the better for me, but for the worse for the videos. Um, and I'm having to do with the job quite a lot of traveling. Um, it's involving going to South America, North America, Mexico, China, Russia, Germany, England, Italy, all over the place fairly regularly. And as a result, I haven't been able to, particularly as I've just started um, the job, find the time really to invest in doing further videos. However, this week I've got a little bit of time to do one and I promise I'll try and find some way of keeping up with it in the near future once I've got to grips with the uh, the new job, which obviously I have to pay a little bit of, of attention to. So what we're going to do in this video then is we're actually going to run the project inside Eclipse, so on an Android device. Now you remember at the start of the series, hopefully you got the project to run as the basic newly created project in Cocos 2DX version 3 already inside Eclipse. And actually all we need to do to get the project to run is just to restart Eclipse and as long as your workspace and everything is the same as before the project will be there and it will build. However, there are a couple of things we need to change that are essential for doing this. And the first one is in the inside the project folder, I'm inside here, here are the classes, inside project Android and JNI there is an android.mk file. I'll just bring out the, the version I have here across and you'll see here that I've highlighted here uh, the text. You need to add in the all of the class files, source files, not header files, that have been added into the project since we last looked in this file. Obviously then in the original project there was only the hello world scene.cpp along with the main and the app delegate. We've now got the cloud game manager, robin tube, setting scene and splash scene in there and they need to be included so that they're also compiled with the build command. Otherwise you don't actually need to make any changes because as I said I think in the first video of this series uh, the um, framework of Cocos 2DX uh, version 3 is uh, written very very well and actually sets everything up for you. So one more thing I want to talk about before um, we jump into the project inside is I will have mentioned hopefully in I can't remember exactly in the first video the Android debug bridge. Now if I just drop into Eclipse inside the ADD bundle, the SDK and platform tools, there's this executable here called ADB and that's actually the program that connects to your device that's plugged into your computer. If I just bring across the terminal here, you can see that I'm inside the platform tools directory. And if I type ADB, I get a load of information telling me commands I can use. And for example, if I type devices, then we can see that I have a device plugged in here. If there's nothing there in your list, it's not detected as your device properly. And you can then use this terminal to install your APK packages or look at logging output or something like this. Now, later in this video, when we start actually running the project, we'll use the logging output inside Eclipse, debugging in Eclipse, but I actually generally prefer to do it via the terminal. So just before we go to Eclipse, the way you look at the uh, logging output is to say ADB and logcat. And what you get then is all of the information since ADB was started that's recorded in the log. Now this is all of the logging information from your device. It doesn't matter whether it's the YouTube app as you can see here, or the sync manager, or your application. You get all of it um, in one place there. A little bit better is to actually, with the ADB, is to ask for the time. So you could say dash V and space time. So you get then with every entry in the log a time and you'll see now that um, if I put the uh, put it to sleep by pressing the sleep button on the tablet and then open the screen again we already get some logging information with a timestamp here and if I just do control and C again you might obviously realize it's not very good having, having everything from your um, from every application you might want to filter for your application and in case of Cocos 2DX there's already a tag that prefixes every logging output and it looks like this I'll just expand that a little bit you want to say logcat dash v space time and then use this pipe in the case of a Mac or Linux to pipe to grep, grep everything that begins with the Cocos 2D dash X like so and now we get only the log the login information coming from Cocos 2D X our application. 
I'm not too sure how you do the filtering um, on the Windows, but I'm sure you can find that out. So I like to do things and install the APKs via the terminal, but like I said, for this video, we'll do it with the Eclipse debugging. So assuming that you've um, updated then the um, the android.mk with the correct classes and everything, we actually don't need to do anything else. You can then start up Eclipse as I've already got started here and the project should be sitting there as it was before with the only difference being that inside classes we've now got all of the new class files that we added. And what you can do then really is probably clean the project and what you want to do then is once the project's clean is just build the project. Now one thing I do have set inside um, inside Eclipse is I turn off the build automatically because my experience this creates a lot of problems so now I'll just say build the project and one of the things you'll need to do is you remember that we defined the font name here okay, font name as markerfelt.ttf well, that should now be changed to fonts forward slash markerfelt because Android requires actually the directory of where the resource is sitting whereas Xcode didn't require this because we just dragged and dropped the link straight into the Xcode resources. Probably with Visual Studio you'll already have had the definition with the fonts. I don't know, but we'll need to change this otherwise you'll get a nasty crash. Now assuming everything's built, okay, certainly it did for me. I've made no changes from the other videos. I just loaded up Eclipse for the first time since the first or second video of the series and, and hit build and everything worked. You'll now be in the position actually to debug the application on your Android device assuming it's plugged in and again you'll want to type from the platform to tools folder ADB and devices just to make sure that device is attached. It's the only thing I have attached. I don't have any virtual devices with Android so I'm just going to right click on the project, go to debug as and Android application and then the top right here I'm going to switch over to the DDMS view like so so I can also see some logging outputs as well. On the left hand side here I've already filtered to simple Flappy Robin. So the application is now actually started. Um, I don't know whether you can hear the music over the microphone or not, but what I'm going to do actually is just f um, film my device so you can actually see the fact that it's started up OK. Uh, it should be recording now. And then I'm just going to tap the screen so that you can see that uh, everything is working as anticipated. Indeed, when the robin hits the floor, the robin dies. Okay then, so that's actually it then for this video. It's a fairly simple video, not really doing very much. It's just showing the application running now inside Eclipse. If you get any problems with this, then please post a comment in the comment section and I'll try to help you because unfortunately the experience with Eclipse can be a little bit fraught at times in getting everything set up. It's clear that the, 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 the team responsible for making Cocoa Studio X version 3 have put a huge amount of work into making sure everything is set up in the first place and you have to do very little. In fact, in the first video in the series you'll have seen that there's very little to do. First or second video, I can't remember. Um, but even so, there are sometimes some strange problems that occur and indeed uh, earlier on today in preparation for this video I have a mirror project of this project. When I started that it didn't build um, for various silly reasons and I had to do cleans and sort various things out to get it to actually work. This one, the official one that runs with the videos, did actually build and run first time. I don't have any idea why the other one went wrong but these things can happen. So if you have some problems then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try to help out with getting it sorted. So now we're inside Eclipse then. The next thing I want to do obviously is what I talked about in the um, previous section, a uh, previous video sorry, is we'll now get around this um, setting stuff here and the game manager will actually start implementing the saving of our settings via the Java layer. So I hope that all made some sense. Um, see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.